and his proximity arrow disappears and something has happened as we look at the replay cameras he's gaining on us with overtake mode but oh my god he loses it he loses it in a straight line hey fantastic people welcome back to our fantastic gaming and you can see that today is a very exciting video it is the first f1 2020 gameplay on this channel and today we're gonna be doing a vietnam vietnam grand prix at the hanoi street circuit it has 23 corners and it's a medium difficulty track we're gonna be racing in the Ferrari of Sebastian Vettel and uh, yeah we're gonna be doing a full qualifying Q1, Q2 and Q3 and we're gonna be doing a 25% race which is 14 laps and uh, let's get into quali qualifying one Q1 I just wanted to let you guys know that this is actually these are actually not my first laps on the game I actually got through Q1 and Q2 but then there was a glitch in the recording and then yeah I didn't get recorded so I actually I'm actually gonna do them again and we're gonna start we're gonna come out of the pits and we're gonna start our first laps of F1 2020 on F1 Tastic Gaming and you're gonna, we're gonna just exit the pit lane for now and you're gonna see that I actually have kind of a custom camera setting so like I'm going through all the cameras, they're all default except for this one, just TV pod offset, I've actually changed the uh, offset horizontal I think and I've put it in the middle as we take off the pit limiter and we come out of the pit lane for the very first time on F1 2020 on this channel and you can see this is quite an awkward pit lane exit because it's actually on the racing line when you get on the track fully and you can see that I have a fair bit of confidence already. Uh, but not, but not like too much in, and you can see I put the ERS into zero there are only two ERS modes in qualifying hot lap and none and I put it into zero and I put the fuel into lean mix uh, because I want to just you know save some fuel and then use it all for like a couple of fast laps as we go down the long straight with which also has a kink and we're gonna open DRS and you can see that this is actually a really really long straight and you get to really high speeds although not as much as you would be if the straight was the same length without the kink and uh, don't get on that exit curb you're gonna lose all your traction if you get on it too much and uh, you're gonna see later on that it is actually quite difficult to get traction there uh, this is my favorite corner of the track it's a really fast corner and you know I just like to ride that curb a lot because it gets you through the corner a lot faster going through the Monaco and then Monaco section now entering the Suzuka section and actually we were, we were actually already in the middle of that section when I said that but you can see off the penultimate, cor penultimate corner the hairpin you lose a lot of traction and coming through the final corner and we start our first flying lap we're coming down the main straight we break hard for turn one quite tight it's a hairpin and again don't get on that curb you're gonna lose a lot of traction but sometimes you can get on it as you go through the first roundabout section through turn 3, turn 4 and turn 5 and opening DRS and you can see that I totally forgot about the ERS on the fuel and it's kind of late to open it but not too late as we break hard for the next roundabout section you can ride those two curbs by the way they uh, save you a lot of time as we go a little bit too tight through the, through the next corner graze the wall a little bit on the right I don't think we got any damage from that but uh, yeah we do I actually do get a bit of damage from that from the Jeff's radio message but not too much as we open DRS we're powering down the straight and 333 334 kph that is really fast with the hot lap ERS increases 20 km kilometers per hour as you can see riding the curb big mistake we lose quite a bit of traction but it's a purple middle middle sector you can see on the mini map as we go through the fast monaco section space on the corners and monaco first few corners and now we're entering the suzuka section as pierre gazi puts in a fastest lap a 1 minute 39.2 kind of gives you an idea of what kind of lap uh, you should be putting in but then you can see Alvin puts in a faster lap of 1 minute 37.9 as well a little bit faster we lose a bit of traction there and we barely miss the wall on the final corner and we come to put in a lap time and it's P2 for now you can see we're gaining on Delta quite a fair bit because 
we have turned up the engine which we forgot to do in the previous lap and coming through the first few corners gaining quite a bit of time Lewis Hamilton with a 137.4 that's probably a better lap time than that's yeah definitely a better lap time than Gasly and Albon as you can see we're gaining a lot of time but then Magnussen comes in the way this is not looking good this could be bad but then we a bit of dirty air kicks in and go wide and he pulls away a little bit you can see we're up three tenths nearly four tenths right now we're deploying a lot of ERS and fuel we opened DRS. I was hoping that we could gain enough on Magnuson to catch him up and overtake him before the hairpin. But no, we can't. You can see we're getting quite uh, quite held up. Get on that curb a little bit too much again. And we're still up five and a half tenths, which is good. But then you can see by this corner, I have to get past him. So we a bit of wheel banging there, but we get past him quickly. And moving towards the end of the lap, we have first two sector is green we're up six cents but we lose a little bit of time in that traction zone and we come across the line to only improve to p4 which is not that much you can see we're gaining time again at the straight uh maybe a bit of engine power being a little better there but we move on to later in the lap you can see that the delta is lying and we have a red first sector and we're going through the second roundabout section. We get a little bit on the curve over there, and we move on. We get a actually we actually get a purple second second sector, which is pretty good. And we come through the final corner. Pretty sure that wall is going to play more victims than the wall of champions. And we don't improve our position. We do improve our lap time a little bit, like in the second sector. But apart from that, nothing. And you can see we return to the garage, and we do have a bit of front wing damage. And uh, we skip through the repair time as we fast forward through the session but then we take a huge huge risk and we fast forward to the entire session and we take a big risk because it is uh, it is known that you know AI can sometimes at the end of very end of the session put in some stellar laps and just pass you pass you and you can you know put you down uh, the order and I could have missed out on Q1 but luckily we stay in the same position P5 and yeah, just ahead of our teammate Charles Leclerc. And now we move on to Q2. Qualifying 2 is a bit shorter than qualifying 1, but then... Oh dear, it's happened again. So remember how I said that there was a glitch in the recording and I had to record Q1, Q2 again? Well, the same thing happened again with Q2. And so all I can tell you is we set the fastest lap of the session with around a 1 minute 37.2. Hanoi Street Circuit is tough on the front tire temps and that resulted in us using an extra set of soft tires. And now we move on to Q3, we're going to start our flying lap. Uh, you can see that the 5 red lights count down. I didn't want to do an out lap uh, because I didn't want to waste too much time. And uh, now we move on to the end of the, uh, the like kind of half out lap. And we're going to start our flying lap, you can see again traction. It's a bit slippery at the end of the uh, penultimate corner, and go a bit too, you know, tight on the final corner, and we break for turn one. We take turn one actually pretty well, but then we lose a bit of traction. I think went a bit too tight, and uh, we're gonna go through the roundabouts. I can go a little bit wide there, but we ride the curb. You can ride that curb if you're just at the right angle and you won't lose traction. And opening DRS, powering down that long straight. You can see the Aramco sponsorships, it's new in the F120 tiny game. And we go through the next two corners. We go a little bit too tight there, but it's okay, it doesn't really matter. And we come to the hairpin at the end of the long straight. Again, riding that curb, but luckily we don't lose all our traction and spin or anything. As Verstappen puts in a 1 minute 37.4, you can see the cars are going faster now that it's in Q3 final qualifying session. We get a purple middle sector we graze the wall a little bit and uh, we don't take that flat out we actually have to let go a little bit as we go through the Suzuka section which is based on the S section at the start of the lap at Suzuka and going through the hairpin uh, again we lose traction a little bit and get and uh, again we go tight through this corner we lose some time and you can see from the Delta we do lose time from that last corner and we're up into P3 for now but then I return to the garage cause you, because you see uh, that we're on worn tires. Remember I said we used an extra set of soft tires in Q2? Well, we were still on those extra set of soft tires. 
But luckily for us, uh, you get an extra set of softs in Q3, uh, just in case things like that happen for us. And now we're going to start another flying lap. Hopefully this one's going to be better than the first one. And we can, you know, challenge for pole a little bit more, possibly front or maybe just second place. But uh, we're going to go ahead and start the flying lap coming through the last, the penultimate corner, the hairpin. Again, losing traction. I still, I still have to learn how to handle that. And you can see we don't take the corner too tight. We do well. We do. We're still a little bit red in the delta. But you can see that there's someone coming out of the pit lane. And as we come through turn one, we go on the curb a little bit, but it's still okay. And Bottas comes out of the pit lane right in front of us. This is the kind of problem I didn't want. We have to down, down dive down the inside. We actually gain quite a bit of time there, two tenths, and it's going up like we're gaining more time, but. Yeah, that's exactly what I feared that and we get a purple first sector, which is actually not bad It's pretty good and you can see there's Hamilton ahead though I don't think he will count as traffic because he's not a slow car So I don't think he will hold us up as we're up by one one tenth now or nearly one and a half tenths We lose a bit a little bit of time over there in that roundabout section and we open DRS we have hot lap and and Max mix and everything and you can see Hamilton lets us by that's great to see that the AI can, AI can recognize that you're on a flying lap so they let you by that's a good thing we lose a bit of time there right on the curb we don't lose traction luckily which is I think yeah that's good and we're up by two and a half tenths a purple second sector we're doing really well here going through my favorite corner in the track and we're going through the fast Monaco section uh, nearly flat out through there we let off a little bit as we enter the Suzuka section for one final time in Q3 because you can see we don't have much time left uh, although we have enough time left but we don't have much as we're up by six tenths six and a half tenths despite losing a little bit of traction seven tenths come through the final corner lose a bit of time but that's okay because we put in the fastest app a 136.9 we make it to the 136's that's great and you can see we gain a little bit of time there but then we lose it again as you can see and we just return to garage abort the lap and when we return to garage there's uh, just I think one second to go in the session and you can see there's a few cars there's like around nine cars so I got worried that that thing might happen where they come across and put super fast laps at the end but you can see that we're getting points for uh, the podium pass and we make it to pole position we keep pole position we're the only one who we're the only driver who uh, put a time of the 136s and we're gonna start in the ray in the ray uh, at first in the race but then it's raining full wet conditions our first race on F1 2019 and it's in the wet conditions and you're gonna see that I try to change the setup to adopt to the you know the wet situation but you can't change the rear wing so I'm trying to adjust the front wing to you know give me that extra downforce that I need I set it to nine nine six wings um, because yeah I think that's balanced enough I think that's good and we're gonna start the race you can see full wet conditions and to one two three four five red lights and it slides out and away we go we get a good start there's a little bit of you know wheel spin but that's mainly because of the rain and we use overtake mode and we get away enough but you can see and Hamilton, he makes a dive down the inside, and we make a bit of contact, and he loses his right end plate, and he goes, and he's doesn't go down the order yet, but he has a huge loss of downforce there. He has wing damage now. Bit of an ambitious dive, but hey, that's great. You know, the AI, AI are being more aggressive, and and you can see we're slipping and sliding around. There's like no traction. We're using overtake mode again to pull away a little bit more from Hamilton. Because I don't, I don't want to battle him too much in the early stages, and you can see that we're going so slow through these corners. But nevertheless, we've had a great start, and this radio message is confirmation. That's what we like to see at the start. Well done. Well, um, thanks a lot, Jeff, for that uh, motivational radio message. As you can see, we're deploying overtake mode, and we've established a good enough gap. And coming into this hairpin, you can see that they close up to us because I'm not that confident in the corners. I'm taking a bit cautious, but then on the exit, we get a great exit. And we're around one second ahead of the cars behind now. 
and again, again my favorite corner we're going through here and a 1.2 second behind which is pretty good that's that's really good for the first lap which is it's quite surprising as we go through the as we enter the Suzuka section and though in the wet you have to be really cautious here because you can easily spin out especially because there's minim minimal to no traction uh, in the rain when you're going at that speed and you can see we take a little bit too cautious here and lose traction again which is fairly normal and we go and we go a little bit tight here again and we put in the fastest lap because obviously we're the lead car deploying overtake mode but when we move on to the end of lap 2 you can see we've got a purple second sector and green first sector and we come across the line 1 minute 50.6 so that's the kind of lap then you know that's kind of the fastest lap we can put in the rain and you can see Bottas is, Bottas is up into second place he's overtaken the team at Hamilton and but you can see he's actually gaining on us we, when we move on to lap 5 he's reduced the gap a little bit and you can see his proximity arrow I actually decided to go to the replay cameras because I wanted to see where he was gain, gaining on us and you can see that he's managing his, his ERS fairly smartly so first of all he's using the ERS in the roundabout section before just before the tight area and now he's using it at the ex exit of that tight corner and now he uses it onto the straight and although I can't believe that he's actually managing the traction with that because that's difficult but as we move on to as we continue from there we're using overtake mode as well uh, in that area but you can see that he's fair he's kinda the gap is kinda consistent but he's still gaining on us quite a, quite a fair bit and as we move on to later on to later on lap 5 we check our tires we're just flicking through the MFD and then we see the tires and the rear tires are actually so worn out for just five laps I mean in five laps you're already into the late 20 percent in the rear tires and that's and that's just that just shows how much you know how much difficult the traction is and how hard it is to manage the tires but then heavy rain will be staying with us for a while now at least a 20 minute window of heavy rain well so much for motivational radio messages as you can see his proximity arrow, Bottas's proximity arrow is there again and uh, he's actually reduced the gap by around 4 tenths it was 1.9 seconds, bef seconds before and he reduces it more and now it's gone to just one second and we've lost so much time there I don't know how but he's gained quite a lot on us even though we use overtake mode in straight and uh, yeah, uh, the gap increases again a little bit so you can, as we go through here, uh, you can see that I'm actually really struggling with the tires and the traction. It's getting pretty difficult, and I, I think I'm using overtake mode in the right places. It's my first race on the game, so I actually don't know how to manage overtake mode that well. But what, and we nearly run out of ERS completely. But you can see that we've actually pulled away from the whole pack except for Bottas. So. Bottas is the only one who is actually sticking with us, who's actually able to catch up to us, but you can see Hamil Hamilton, Verstappen and Albon, they're not catching up to me, the gap is just increasing as we get a purple middle sector, but then along comes Jeff. Be careful, we think you're going to start losing some tire grip around there. I was like, okay Jeff, I know that, but then I started panicking, like not panicking, but I was just like, you know, a little worried, like, okay, how do I manage this, you know, I'm having tire wear, uh, Bottas is catching up to me. Will there be a last lap battle? Well, hopefully it's the last lap so I can defend, but if it's before the last lap, then it might be a bit of a problem. As you can see, you can see his proximity arrow again. And we're coming through the final corner. And we move on to lap number 8. The end of lap number 8. And you can see he's within one second of us. 8 tenths, 7 tenths. Again, 8 tenths. He's, he's within one second of us. Thankfully in the rain there's no DRS because it's not safe, but still you can see I put it into rich mix, you know, I get a bit worried, I want to defend, he, he is just barely within one second of us, but then a really funny joke came in my mind. So let's check it out. Bottas, any last wishes? Me. Fastest lap? And then guess what happens? At the end of the very same lap, you can see first sector green second sector purple and then coming across the line 
we get a faster slap, 1 minute 57.6. Uh, wasn't really pushing, but yeah, that joke just popped up. Anyways, moving back to our race, you can see the proximity arrows again. It says, it says the gap is 1.7, but as we come down the straight, it has changed to 1.3. And you're gonna see that Kevin Magnuson is out of the session, we're hitting Tyra, as we see the replay cameras, what happened. He went wide as turn 1, at turn 1, he's going very slow, but then, but then he comes back on track, and then he goes back off track, and that is the race over for the Haas car. The first retirement on F1 2020 on this channel. And you can see coming through the first few corners, Bottas is within one second, but he can't overtake us right now because there are yellow flags, and you can see the the ghosted car of Kevin Magnussen is right there. But then we grade the wall a little bit, and you can see that the gap has severely decreased. He's one tenth, two tenths behind us, around three tenths, and we ha graze the wall a little bit over there. But still, that doesn't matter because that didn't affect us too much because he's right on our rear end now we have to get away from him it's only lap 11 we still have three full laps left after this lap so I really need to defend for my life and you can see that he's catching up to us through the, from the proximity arrows we use a lot of overtake mode maybe a bit too much and you can see we've nearly run out of ERS and Bottas is right behind us he's less than a tenth behind us on 10th behind us, but we defend aggressively, we block him off, we have to stay ahead of him, I really want to win this race, but we live to fight another day as we get some ERS in the breaking zone, and uh, yeah, we still survive, which is very, very lucky, because you can see that we're getting red sectors, we're not doing that well, but blocking him off was actually really important, it was crucial, but you can see that our tires are really worn out now, as we move on to lap number 12 you can see he's catching up to us again he's right behind us he's right there and our tires are in the 60s our rear tires in terms of tire wear they're in the 60s which is really really dangerous it's nearing the puncture zone and you can see in the corners how much Bottas is catching up to us he's right behind us see he's right there less than two, ten two tenths is the gap as he goes for a dive down the inside he's got he's got he's got it he's got the car there he's placed the car very well but we but we ride the throttle in the middle of the corner mid apex or so or something and we stay ahead for now but you can see we're using overtake mode we are trying we really need to get away from him uh, there's only two laps left in this race after this lap but then you can see there's the yellow flags behind and his proximity arrow disappears and something has happened as we look at the replay cameras he's gaining on us with overtake mode but oh my god he loses it he loses it in a straight line he he puts it into the barriers and let's look at it from another angle you can see he was so close behind he was about to catch us but then the F1 god saved us and you can see that the AI mistakes coming in he destroys his front wing he needs to come in for a pit stop and you can see that he comes in the, into the pits now he has completely destroyed his front wing and we have survived this attack we we have only two laps in this uh, race and you can see he's still in the pits and he's gonna lose a few positions and the gap behind to Verstappen is 17 seconds and there's no way and almost two laps that he can catch up to us he can't make up th that many positions and we have survived the attacks of Valtteri Bottas and for, and hats off to Codemasters for putting in these AI mistakes because sometimes it can be really crucial but you can see that our tires are really really going off we're really we're really uh, nearing the puncture zone I can't this might be a problem because in the last because when the tires are wearing out they start wearing out faster towards the higher stages and so as we move on to the final lap you can see the the icon which shows you how worn the tires are it's bright orange it's dark orange and you can see we're going wide because we're really really losing grip Verstappen has caught up to us by two seconds in the last lap but that's still okay that's not a problem as we graze the wall a little bit and you can see that that icon is getting darker and darker and the tires are in the puncture zone the rear tires are in re are really really worn 72% 73% this is really dangerous. We could, we could have a puncture, and it's on. It's the last lap. We're giving it all. We really have nothing left to 
give we have a little bit of ERS and probably some fuel but not that much and we're really really just trying to keep it on the road not not put it into the barriers and most of all not get a puncture you can see that you see that I'm really really being light on the throttle I'm not pushing it too much because I cannot suffer a puncture and you can see that Verstappen has gained on us as we power down the main, sta main straight braking for the hairpin we have to be really careful here because I really don't want to get on that curb and luckily we don't get on that curb and we don't wear out our tires even more coming coming to the my favorite corner on the track you can see we don't take it too aggressively and you can see that we're really really being careful for the traction we can wear out our tires too much we're having to go really slow and you can see the icon is nearly red the tire wear icon is nearly red this is very this is very very dangerous it's re really reaching you know to the really really worn areas and now we're we're coming through the penultimate corner the hairpin we've only got one more corner to go the it's a uh, the final corner we put it into overtake mode and we come home to win the Vietnam Grand Prix we win our first race on F1 2020 now let's watch the podium ceremony Ferrari have really pulled it out of the bag today it's a great win Anthony Davidson, a resounding victory today. What set them apart from the rest? Rain always has the potential to liven up a race and mix up the order, and they've taken full advantage of that to claim the victory today. It's always a bit of a lottery when the conditions are like this, but they've managed to stay on circuit and have come... And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today, and a stunning win for Ferrari. And so we win the Vietnam Grand Prix. You can see that uh, we get some points for the podium pass. And Daniel Ricciardo got driver of the day. There's a new pop-up feature. And uh, we're going down the order. And you can see that Bot Bottas finishes in 10th place. He comes in for the pits. And he finishes in 10th place really far behind. Mercedes threw everything at us. We hit tire wear. There was so much in, the res in this race. But we still came to win. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe and don't forget to turn on notifications for more Formula 1 content, visit, visit the F1Tastic website for written Formula 1 content and this is F1Tastic Gaming.